Hi, this is Beth Outram, and in this video, I'm going to be discuss discussing changing the fiscal year as a part of the JDE Finance Best Practices series put on by SmartBridge. This video is based on the assumption that you have read the written blog pertaining to the same subject that is also a, a part of this series. Although changing the fiscal year is not something that one does very often in an organization, regardless of whether you use JDE or not, it's becoming more common as more mergers and acquisitions are happening in the financial area. In this particular case, the company had a fiscal year of October, and we wanted to change it to January, and they are on E1 9.0. So the very first thing that you need to do is consider several different things. One is what kind of financial statements are you going to be using to, for reconciliation? We use the trial balance, the general ledger, consolidated balance sheet, and consolidated income statement. And since it, this particular company had fixed assets, we also used the fixed asset to general ledger integrity report. These must be run first before you begin so that you have a basis of comparison and then run immediately after this process is finished to make sure that everything is the way you want it to be. The other thing that you must do, of course, is to back up your production environment and have tested this whole procedure in a test environment where you know that the steps that you're going to take and how they'll be impacting the data. So let's look at our company master right now and talk about the date patterns. As you can see, the date pattern that they used was an F, and it begins on October 1st and ends on September 30th, of course. Now, like I said, we're going to be changing this to January. So here are our date pattern F years. And you can see that in 2014, we did something a little bit differently because we had we were three or four months into the fiscal year 2014 for this company. So we left the October 1st starting date and the ending dates for October and November are the same. However, since we closed the big books on the existing company on the 12th of January, we changed the ending date for period three to be the 12th of January. End of period four was the end of January and then consistently through to the end of the year. The date pattern that we used that we are going to go to is date pattern R. And here we have it set up and we set it up a little bit further because of the fixed asset system that we have. And again, you can see that in this particular date pattern, we started October 1st, ended 1031, just like on the other one. November stayed the same. January was 112. And then all of the remaining periods end on 112. Our beginning of fiscal year 15 was the 13th of January, 2015. And that gets us started on the right sequence of periods. So you make sure that your date patterns are all set up in your fiscal date pattern table. And then you would go into your company master and change these to a date pattern of an R. Now we did all the companies at once. You may choose to do some companies and not others, but that isn't the way that we did it. So I'm going to change all of these companies to an R. So you can see that we've changed all of our companies to now have the date pattern of an R, although our beginning year is still October 1st, 2014. 
The other thing that I would remind you to do is take advantage of the proofs that are available to you. The very first one that you're going to run is to calculate fiscal year and period. And what this does is it goes through your general ledger detail and changes the periods and fiscal years for all of the records who now have a changed beginning and ending period. So what we did for this is, let's look at the processing options. Always run it in proof. I ran it many times in proof, and when I got what I wanted, that was the way that I continued to do it. So I ran it in proof first, and then I did not automatically run R099102, which recalculates the balances in your F0902 table because I wanted to run the clear of the account balances first before I ran the recalculate. And on my processing options, I'm sorry, on my data selections, you can see that you can choose a particular company if you wish to. What we did is simply run it for all, so we took that out. But we wanted ledger type AA only and fiscal years greater than or equal to 2014. Like I said at the beginning, you may want to do this further back so that the periods that you're using in your reporting are consistent with the periods that you now have. So when that completes and you get the information that you like on it, the next thing that you're going to run is the clear. This is something that's fairly new to E1 and very handy. Um, <laughs> you may still run into a problem where you have a beginning year balance that you may want to get rid of, but we wouldn't have changed 2014's year to beginning year balances because 2014 is the same beginning balance regardless of whether it supposedly begins in January or in October. So this clears the 902 account balances, not the beginning balance, just the account bu buckets 1 through 14. So I don't think this has any processing options. No. But it does have a data selection, obviously. And we did fiscal period greater than or equal to 14. And then we're going to add our ledger type because we only want to choose ledger type AA to clear. Because we don't want to clear out any budgets that might be in F0902. Again, you're going to want to run this in proof as many times as you wish in order to make sure everything is correct. And I always print detailed output so that I can look at it. After your clearing of the balances happens, then you want to go ahead and run your recalculate balances. And in our data selections, again, we could simply choose a single company but we did not. We took this out. But we did run it for AA. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we did run it for greater than or equal to 14. So that both fiscal year 14 and 15 would be recalculated. Once those have finished, then you want to do your annual close. Here's your annual close, and we're going to run it for 14. So it will create the beginning balances for fiscal year 15. We zero out the profit and loss statement. We didn't change budgets. And we did ask it to print us the supporting detail so we would know. We could look back at that as for audit purposes and see. Again, we ran it for all companies. 
and obviously fiscal year 14. Now, if you are using the fixed asset module, there are a couple of things to consider. If you have ever run the depreciation calculations in a summarized manner, you cannot use the fixed asset repost. If that sounds like the voice of experience, it is. You will need to find some way, I did it with SQL, to create a 2015 balance in F1202 and move the data from fiscal year 14 to fiscal year 15 without the fixed asset as a repost. You will still do the fixed asset close for the end of the year of fiscal year 14, R12825. Here we have the parameters on the processing options as we did them. We did not carry forward the balances for disposed assets. We did do all ledgers and we updated the depreciation information. And for our data selections, we didn't care. We wanted to do it across the board. So again, in the written portion of the blog, it goes into what you need to do for fixed assets. If you've ever run depreciation calculations in a summarized manner, it will take you through step by step so that you can do perform that properly. If you've never done that, the fixed asset repost and the, the fixed asset annual close, and it is R12910. So if you can use that, please do. But be aware that if you've ever summarized your depreciation calculations, you will really be getting yourself into a pickle. Here's the processing options for the repost and the data selection. Again, we did not use this, so um, you will need to set your data selections as you wish. So I hope that has given you some more information, some more in-depth information on how to do the changing of the fiscal year. You still will only have three or four periods in 2014, but that reflects what really happened in the financial position of the company. So try this out. Uh, read the directions carefully. Again, I've referenced some more materials in the written portion of this. And stay tuned for some more finance best practices from SmartBridge.